Hello, my name's Mark and I'm GCO Tutor and I'm here with Practical Machinists today to look at alternatives to using trigonometry when we're programming angles within our machine. So we're going to look at Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so quite often when we're programming parts at our machine, whether it's with G-code or CAD CAM, or maybe even producing an angle on a manual machine, we're going to need to know how to work with angles mathematically. So quite often we use trigonometry for this, but now and again, there's a quicker way. If we know the length of two sides, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to solve our triangles. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at right angle triangles and how we can solve them using Pythagoras. So let's start with drawing a right angle triangle. Now I'm going to label each side here. So our shortest length here is, uh, we're going to label A. Our adjacent length, we're going to label B. And our hypotenuse, we're going to label C. So this is how we're going to work with this. So Pythagoras' theorem states that A squared plus B squared will equal C squared. So we take the square of the length of the two shorter sides, and that will equal the square of the hypotenuse, the longest side. Now I often find it's easier to explain this with graphics, so I've made a graphic. So if we take our hypotenuse and we extrude the lengths to turn it into a perfect square on that side, so we have four lengths the same side as the hypotenuse, and we do the same to the opposite and the adjacent. So now we can see with visuals what the square root looks like and it helps us understand this theorem. So if we fill the adjacent side with a green color and the opposite side with a blue color, and then we pour those two colors into the square of the hypotenuse. You can see here that it both equally fills that square. So that's the theory behind Pythagoras. Okay, so let's look how we solve this mathematically. Okay, so we've ascertained Pythagoras' theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And here's our triangle with those squares on it. So let's pop this over to the left-hand corner here and let's work on one of these equations. So let's say our triangle has a shorter side of three and the bottom side there is four and we're trying to calculate what C is. So by using Pythagoras' theorem, we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And by the way, if you're ever asked to describe Pythagoras' theorem in a job interview, simply say that A squared plus B squared equals C squared is the correct answer. So um, we take A squared plus B squared equals C squared and then we substitute that with the lengths that we know. So our shorter length there on the left is three, so we can substitute A with three. The one on the bottom there is four, which is B, so B equals four squared, and C squared is still the unknown. So now we know that three squared plus four squared does equal our hypotenuse, that's squared. Okay, so we can do this math. So three squared is the same as saying three times three, and four squared is the same as saying four times four. So we know that three times three plus four times four is equal to C squared. So we can do the maths here, three times three equals nine, four times four equals 16. So now we have our answer at nine plus 16 equals C squared. So it's getting easier and easier to work out what this formula is going to be. So we know that nine plus 16 is equal to 25, but the C is a squared of C. So we have to find the square root of 25 to give us our answer. So we do the square root of 25. So five times five is 25. So the square root of 25 is equal to five. So that means our longest length there, I hypotenuse, is equal to five. And we have the classic three, four, five triangle. So the three, four, five triangle is quite a famous triangle in maths. This is the smallest triangle we can form with round numbers. So the ones of you that's up on your maths probably knew this was five before we'd done any equations. So that's our three, four, five triangle. So let's go over briefly again how that worked. So if we take our triangle, we got the shortest length there is a squared. The length on the bottom there, the adjacent is b squared and the hypotenuse is c squared. So we can substitute the numbers that we've just worked out into that because we know that would be correct. So we now have our three, four, five triangle with the lengths written. So now if we take our sides of our triangle and turn them into squares, and we can divide them up into further squares. So because we know this side is three and it's three squared, so three times three is nine, we're gonna divide this side up into nine equal squares. And the bottom was four, so four squared is 16. So we divide that one up into 16 equal squares. And then we can pop all those squares into our C, into our hypotenuse squared there, and they will all fit exactly. And in C there, there is 25 squares, so the triangle works. 
Now we don't need to stop there. If we know what the hypotenuse is and we don't know one of the other lengths, we can transpose this formula to make any part of the subject. And if you're interested in the transposition, I also have um, another lesson with Practical Machinists that discuss linear transposition of equations to teach you how to do this. So very briefly, I'm gonna go over to rearrange this to find what B would be to make B the subject. Now we already know it's four, so we've just proven the equation and the theorem at this point. So we know that C squared is our five length, but this time we're rearranging the formula to make B the subject. So we say C squared minus two squared, and that equals B squared. And that's how we rearrange the formula to find the subject. But for more information on this, uh, have a look at my linear transposition of equations lesson. So Pythagoras' theory is used in place of trigonometry when we know two lengths and we need to find the third length. For anything more complex than this, we would use trigonometry to work out angles, etc. So if you enjoyed this machine shop maths lesson, I have a full course over on my website at gcotutor.com. It's a nine hour machine shop maths lesson and it's currently priced very affordable over there. And I also have some free articles that will help you brush up on your machine shop maths over at gcotutor.com.